观众，大家好，今天很荣幸有机会可以来跟大家分享欧洲 SaaS 主角兽如何协助啊、呃、游戏产业跟全球的玩家做互动。我是今天的讲师 l a y l a 目前在 i n f o b i 担任业务经理，帮助更多在台湾的企业运用多通路的 SaaS 策略，更快速且弹性的去布局全球的用户。今天的主题会从疫情时代玩家行为的变迁，带到如何去影响游戏产业在出海时会遇到的挑战，而运用 i n f o b i 的解决方案来说明如何从身份验证到客服和再行销，帮助游戏从发行到运营来提升整体的 ROI。那在疫情的影响之下呢，海外用户有哪些行为的改变呢？其实我们可以看到上面这个图是来自 App a n n i 一家做行动应用装置的市场调研公司。那他们针对二零二零 Q 三所做的一个与过去同期的一个游戏下载市场比较。那在疫情的影响之下呢？ 2 0 2 0 Q 3的年增长率其实提升了数个百分比。那游戏引擎厂商 Unity 也有针对这样子的成长，在嗯六月份的报告中也提出了一个分析。那其中是来自 PC 端的用户其实是增长了呃四十一个百分比，那行动应用装置也有十七个百分比这样子的成长。那这些成长大多是因为受到。嗯，疫情的影响，其实普遍玩家他们待在时呃家里的时间变长了。那上面可以看到，疫情之后呢，周末跟平日之间，玩家的游戏时间越来越接近了，从原本一点五个百分比的差距缩短到了零点五六。那也受到疫情的关系，其实相较过去呢，玩家们更会主动去搜寻有哪些新的有趣的游戏啊。所以，呃，整体由于用户相对是比较活跃，对厂商来讲，获客成本相较过去也是有明显的一个下降。那这些成长的玩家有没有同样的帮厂商来，呃，就是带到这个收入的一个成长的动能呢？其实上方我们可以看到，疫情下所带来的这些新玩家在付费转换率其实是高于既有玩家的。那整体的收入其实，呃，相较既有玩家来讲，虽然是低了一点，但是在付费的习惯，其实可以看到说，呃，疫情的催，嗯、呃，催动之下，其实，呃，付费习惯的养成是相较过去以往是快上许多的、哦。那厂商在接收这一群。呃，活跃的玩家同时也应该持续的去检视说，那我们现在的策略是否能够有效的去延续这一波热潮，进而带动整体玩家的一个收入的成长。那到这边大家其实可以去思考，那这些玩家行为的转变对整体的游戏产业会带来哪一些挑战呢？那这边帮大家做一个呃总结的整理。第一哦，就是呃新进的玩家成长动能，虽然带动了整体付费转化率的提升，也帮游戏厂商带来很多新的玩家、新的用户。但企业需要去思考的一个挑战是，这些快速融入的这些全球玩家，其实在有开始游戏的第一步，注册的这个身份认证体验是否顺畅？那付费机制是否对这些新手来讲是友善的呢？那再来第二的是，少了上班通勤跟出门的限制，其实玩家活跃的时间越来越没有一个呃明显的分界，那像是没有平日跟周末的差别，也有可能是来自呃不同时区不同语言的的这些玩家。那现在的这个客服支持是否能够来及时的解决这些玩家的问题呢？那第三的是，由于用户相较是比较活跃的，那厂商也会在这波热潮之下，持续的来推出新的游戏。那有别于过去的一些市场环境，其实疫情之下，游戏的这个产品周期其实是比较难以去做预测的。比方说，现在的呃玩家用户空余的时间增加了，那一些旧玩家回归的可能性也会提高。那如何持持续的去跟呃这些不同热度的玩家进行沟通？来延续热潮，其实是厂商在付费转化上面很重要的一个环节。那到这边，大家就会想到，那厂呃，企业既然要呃开发游戏、发行跟运营，那如何又要兼顾各个不同阶段玩家会遇到的这些复杂的沟通问题呢？
那可能有些观众心中已经有了一些答案，但其实是想到就是执行面的一些复杂度，要跟各个不同厂商进行串接，就又会默默的再把这个想法先搁置在一旁。但呃，没关系，接下来我这边会用大概一分多钟影片的时间来跟大家说明欧洲 SaaS 主角兽 i n f o b i t 是如何运用灵活弹性的 SaaS。通讯平台来帮助游戏公司及时支援这些来自全球的玩家。In today's hyper-connected world, there's nothing users appreciate more than a memorable customer experience. But winning their hearts and minds means being present on all their channels, all across the globe, while meeting all local regulations. It is complex, but there is a simple solution. Infobip's cloud communication platform provides one seamless connection to the world's most popular communication channels. Through our worldwide network of connections, we reach more than seven billion people and things. By offering powerful omni-channel communication solutions for each step of the customer journey, we help optimize the customer experience in a scalable and flexible way. Be it unbeatable account security straight from signup. Critical alerts, special offers, notifications on carts abandoned and orders shipped, or secure anonymous communication with your rideshare driver by using text messages, mobile app messaging, chat apps, RCS, voice, email, or bots. Our solutions make switching channels as easy for companies as it is for their customers. We help companies overcome the complexity of consumer communication, increase customer satisfaction, and grow their business. Our local presence, with more than 60 offices on six continents, enables us to react faster, support better, and engage more. Together with our clients, we create communication solutions of the future. Let us show you how. 那看完刚刚的介绍，嗯 ，Infobit 我们是把很多复杂的沟通通道变得更简单了。大家可以看到，这是一个 C Pass 的通讯及服务的云端互联平台。那我们平台上跟全球八百多家的电信商直连。并且跟各个市场上广为使用的这个社交 App 或是呃云端服务做串联，所以在这个云端平台上面，我们提供与玩家互动上面所需要的，不管是文字或是或是这个语音等通讯渠道。所以企业在跟嗯、呃、用户沟通的互动旅程上面，可以运用平台上面高效稳定的，不管说是像是身份安全认证。或者是全通道的客服支援，跟多通道的这个行销自动化互动解决方案，都可以来协助企业根据不同的业务扩展需求，来快速而且灵活的去导入到实际的业务流程。那 i n f o b i t 是如何运用平台解决方案来帮助游戏产业从身份认证到客服，再到行销，从中去提升从发行到运营的 ROI 呢？那首先从第一步，呃，玩家注册必经的这的这个身份呃认证简讯通知啊，或者是说完整完全性比较高的这个突围费认证，其实都需要一个快速且友善的用户经验，来帮助玩家可以啊、呃、快速的去取得这个游戏的入场券。那而且，嗯，现在就是玩家其实是来自全球各地。那企业其实无法预期说，今天可能在某一个国家突然有大量的玩家注册游戏，但却因为，嗯，注册的认证的这个简讯发够发送不够及时稳定，而造成这个用户的流失。那如果说我想要就是提前。一步去做好这个准呃简讯的准备，其实跟各国的这个电信商法规或者是说网络环境来打交道，光是第一步其实就会耗尽企业内部的时间跟资源。那在 i n f o b i t 呢，我们其实是跟呃全球的八百多家电信商直连，当地价格而且当地发送，那发送品质是非常稳定且快速的。
。在平台上面，其实我们也可以运用，嗯，一些自动化的流程，来直接触发玩家在重要时刻的一些沟通旅程。那无缝的使用者经验，其实在第一步就可以提升玩家对游戏的一个好感度。那在下一步玩家梳理 on board 之后呢，企业迎来的是这一些来自全世界啊、呃、不同时区、不同语言，甚至是不同沟通文化的玩家。那如何在呃玩家有问题的时候可以及时的支援解决，避免玩家抱怨，也是玩家在啊、呃、体验上一个不可避免的一个挑战。那根据美国 Total Consumer 的一个报告。指出，其实有百分之八十六的用户是为会为了更好的服务来付更多的钱，所以，嗯，为了可以帮助企业可以提供更好的客服资源来留住玩家，并且提升玩家的这个付费意愿，那我们平台上面支援多国语言、多通道的语音服务跟文字客服。那玩家可以在游戏的过程中，就直接在 App 内，不管是透过文字或者是电话来直接联系到客服。那面对嗯疫情之下一些市场的未知性，呃，我们也提供不同层级的内部专业技术支援团队。在全球，我们有六十多个当地的团队，可以提供最了解当地市场规则的一些及时支援，那帮助游戏公司。啊、呃，可以针对未知性做多一层的一个阴影的机制。那最后，嗯，一款游戏的产品周期其实是，嗯，可长可短。那考虑到不同热度的玩家相继加入，除了游戏本身的一个内容的提升以外，其实也需要持续的跟玩家去做，嗯，互动来延续热潮。那 i n f o b i b 的全通路行销自动化，可以针对不同玩家进行分群，追踪玩家的一个互动轨迹，并且适时在一些重要的时间点来进行个人化的一些行销沟通。那帮助企业来推动最后，嗯，付费转化的最后一步，呃，重要的 ROI 转换。那呃，讲到这边 i n f o b i b 是如何运用 SaaS 策略帮助？嗯，游戏产业将一连串的这些玩家旅程成功落地到全球的市场呢？那我们是一个 C Pass 的平台，提供企业内部不管是嗯不同技术能力的背景的使用者一个友善的操作界面。那像是不需要编码能力就能够操作的视觉化拖拉工具，那也有提供开放的 API 传接文件。这些都是可以非常弹性的去做，嗯，扩充，然后并且是可以很迅速的去整合到厂商实际的一个商务作业流程。那游戏公司在跟呃全球的玩家互动，需要的是一个多通道的客服平台，来支援不同市场的沟通习惯。那在 i n f o b i t 的全通道客服整合解决方案里面呢，我们平台支援多国语言、多通道的语音服务跟文字客服。那玩家可以在 App 内，不管是透过文字、电话，还直接联系到客服。那客服人员也可以非常轻松的就透过这样子一个单一的操作平台，来及时支援到来自不同嗯沟通通道的这些玩家的问题。那除了呃被动的去处理这些玩家的问题以外，其实，在热度相对比较高的游戏市场，企业呢，我、呃、嗯应该是更需要更主动的去跟呃新进的玩家或者是既有的玩家来做一个及时的互动，来提升整体玩家的一个粘着度。那在嗯 i n f o b i t 的行销自动化解决方案里面，其实可以依据就是不同玩家类型的活跃热度，那运用简单的呃视觉拖拉界面，不管是一步步培养新玩家的一个养客沟通，或者是说重新唤起旧玩家的回娘家行销活动，都可以在这样子的一个平台上面轻松去规划出玩家互动的一个脚本。那二零二一年其实对大部分的产业来讲都还是一个未知的状态。那疫情的影响之下，游戏产业的获客成本也相对降低。那企业更应该把握这场危机来延续这波玩家的热度。那面对不同
呃将未知而且相较活跃的玩家，我们欢迎更多的游戏公司来运用 Infobit 高弹性可扩充的这个全通路通讯平台，来大胆跟全球的玩家做一个更及时的互动。那我们是 i n f o b a b 我们的团队遍布全球六十多个国家，有超过一千六百个专业的员工，跟八百多家的这个电信商直连。那全球也有三十四个数据中心，来协助更多企业的一个出海业务跟落地服务。那我今天的分享就到这边，如果有任何想了解更多 i n f o b a b 在游戏产业的应用解决方案，也欢迎来信到我们台北的团队跟我们交流。谢谢大家。Hi everyone, I'm Tom, Chief Operating Officer at Pentium Network. Today, I will share with you how we can help you and your team run your game service and operation worldwide around the clock. With a mix of clouds in a brand new way, better, smarter, and faster. Stay tuned. Pentium Network is a team of highly skilled software developer and operating experts, devoted. To providing the smart technology to solve the growing complexity issues in the modern cloud-based IT operations, especially in the gaming industry, to make it simpler, smarter, and more agile. Founded by a team of serial entrepreneurs, including industry experts in gaming, video streaming, cloud natives, AI, and IT transformation. We're the right team with the needed skills and what it takes to deliver. Three R&D team leads among us coming from the CTO roles in the other startups. Before joining in, sharing the same ideas to redefine the way that the modern IT engineers should operate. Success in digital service operations is about delivering competitive service quality at a competitive cost. Modern game operations require using a mix of clouds and technologies from different suppliers, offering service cross continents, around the clock, with nice speed and reliability, and updating frequently so that customers always have something new to hope for, and happily stick to our games and services. We need to deliver all of that at a cost equal to or less than competition, so to stay competitive and fit. That sounds understandable and very challenging. When we put ourselves into the IT engineer's shoes, this is what you could probably get on your desktop every day. Normal human can track four to five moving objects at a time, yet about half of the cloud IT engineers are required to track ten monitoring tools. If we count in the cloud consoles from AWS, GCP, Cloudflare, and the like for managing services on the cloud, the number can easily go up to 20. This may sound trivial to you, no big deal, right? But frequent switching between tools and consoles build up stress to people, and then people like me can make mistakes. 70% of the known outages due to human are no secret. When services are down, the upset customers can leave us for competition. Even worse, they can backmouth us on social media to create negative virals. The financial loss alone ranges between 5,000 and 600,000 USD per minute, or three million dollars for every five minutes. If we are talking about companies like Apple. When we find ourselves too busy, it can be time to change. What if we can reduce the number of tools and consoles? What if we can walk around doing IT operations as many other professionals have already done? What if 
we can use automation to take care of our daily routines, even if we don't feel like writing code. What if one day AI can really help, like in many other areas, without costing our jobs? Allow me to introduce to you Marvin, your one-stop AI platform. For the IT engineers, Marvin can reduce the number of consoles from 20 to 1, use automation to speed up daily work, and use mobile devices to operate anywhere, anytime to bring back the world-like balance. For SRE and automation developers, Marvin can provide frameworks and tools to help develop automation faster and integrate with CI/CD toolchain to make Deva more agile. And for the top of business, Marvin can bring immediate productivity uplift, that means profitability, and also as an evolving platform leading into full automation and AI enabled, so the investment today is future proofed. The heart of the Marvin is to deliver better ways to operate with mobile chatbot, make developers and operators working closer. For more mature automations, no human interventions ever needed, and for the evolving AI to eventually help simplify operations. Marvin can help you connect public and private clouds, capture events from different sources of monitoring tools, allow human and system interfacing easier than ever, and launch automation decisively to save the day whenever needed. With full support on enterprise IT governance, and was builder for the developer ecosystem. Marvin features a single pane of glass console to manage all infrastructures, chatbots to operate with mobile anywhere, anytime, drag and drop automation reusable without writing code, event trigger automation for faster remediation and less downtime, access and changes to any Marvin managed assets now traceable and as a friendly companion for the CI CD best practice. We focus on customer success. Take one Southeastern Asia customer operating game services in five countries, for example, serving more end users with far less people, hundreds of thousands of potential service downtimes prevented last year managing massive assets on cloud and on-premises combined, and updating as frequently as possible to make end user happy, thanks to Marvin. Now it's showtime. First, let's fly by the basic about Marvin, managing clouds, reusable automation, and its sophisticated permission control better for your needs than most of the cloud providers RBAC. Second, will show you how Marvin receives external events from Grafana, sends Slack notifications when the disk is overloaded, and when you agree on Marvin's automation to fix the problem, it gets it done, before you even realize. Finally, we'll show you how Marvin empowers you to check, renew, and redeploy your security certificates on running services all through a few clicks on chatbots. Ready for this? And let's row. When Marvin is at work, all supported cloud resources can be easily registered on, synchronized with, and managed through a single pane of glass. Automation running beautifully behind the scene can, sim can simply drag and drop and reuse without writing codes. Permission control as for who can access what can be defined exactly the way you like it in one place. I know that is fast. I'll try to make it slower. About event trigger, Marvin can interwork with external event system to trigger automation. Grafana monitor disk loading, Slack notify alarms as a human checkpoint, and Marvin automation fix problems to prevent outage. Here Grafana monitor this usage and alarm went over 70%. On Marvin, let's register Grafana events. Copy the webhook URL and go back to Grafana alert setting. 
paste it and save. Back to Marvin, let's create a workflow with this Grafana event as the starting point. Let's set select notification as a human checkpoint to approve the next steps. The next step is a simple shell script to clear files to lower the disk usage. When it's done, send a message to Slack again. Now let's see how it works. When Grafana observes disk usage shooting above 70%, Marvin Automation starts to run in short seconds. On Slack, receive alert and we click yes. Marvin runs automation to clear the files and we get notification on Slack again. This usage is now back to normal. Marvin saves the day. All this happened in less than 40 seconds. If we skip the Slack human checkpoint, the turnaround time can be only a few seconds, and this would become a no-ops scenario, meaning no human intervention between events and the automation remediations. Next, let's talk about chat ops. Chat ops is about using instant messaging with chatbot to run automated operations. Telegram and Marvin will be working together here to check the status for the expiring security certificates, renew them, and deploy to three CDNs to preempt unexpected outages due to certificate expiration. Human operations are only a few clicks on Telegram, and Marvin does the rest. Last row. Marvin can help you operate clouds over Telegram, Slack, and the like. On Marvin, first that we create a chatbot command to trigger automation workflow. And on Telegram, let's type help to list all chatbot commands. Here we got one we just created. And let's type check SSL to run check expired certificate workflow. Back to Marvin, we see the workflow starts running. On Telegram, there are certificates about to expire in 30 days, and we want to renew and redeploy them to CDN, so we click Yes. This triggers Marvin to run the next step. First of all, Marvin renewed expiring certificates from the supplier Let's Encrypt, here we see the new certificates are being applied, three of them. And then, the other automation start running to deploy the renewed certificates to CDNs from CloudFront, AliCloud, and Tencent. Telegram tells us that it's all done. All we did, just a few clicks on the chatbot. Imagine how Pentium Network can help you run cloud IT operations smarter, simpler, and more agile with Marvin. Contact us and start your Marvin journey today. If you are visiting Taipei Game Show this year, you can find our booth in the B2B area. Look forward to meeting you there, or somewhere else around the world, hopefully very soon. Stay well. See you next time. Bye now. はい、スクエアニックスの橋本でございます。えー、私はあのファイナルファンタジーのブランドマネージャーを担当しております。まああの FF シリーズいろんな作品が出まして、えー、特に昨年ですね、えー、4月10日に FF7 のリメイクのまあ第1弾というのが発売させていただきまして
、まあ、多くの皆様、世界中の皆様ですね、に遊んでいただいて大変感謝しております。えー、昨年年末には、まあ、ゲームアワーズを含めてですね、いろんなところから賞もいただきまして、えー、ますます皆様にですね、えー、もう一度遊んでいただければという内容になっておりますので、ぜひこちらもよろしくお願い申し上げます。本日、まあ、台湾ゲームショーの方にお誘いいただきまして、まあ、私の方から、あまあ、ファイナルファンタジーのまあ歴史についてちょっと触れさせていただければと思っております。えー、まず、流行る第一作目でございますが、1987年ですね、ファミリーコンピューター用ソフトとして、ファイナルファンタジーの第一作目が登場しております。えー、それから、早ですね、33年にわたって、様々なハードにファイナルファンタジーシリーズが発売されております。えー、現在発売中の最新ナンバーは、2016年に発売されたファイナルファンタジー15となっております。開発中のタイトルとしては昨年発表させていただきましたファイナルファンタジー16についてもですねこれもまた新しい情報をお待ちいただければと思っておりますでファイナルファンタジーシリーズでございますが、まあ、ナンバーとして続くシリーズですが単なるですねこう続編ということではなくてそれぞれナンバーごとにですねそれぞれ違った世界観ですとかですねキャラクターたちドラマそういったものがですね、えー、一個一個個別にありまして、それがこう、まあ全体として紡いでいくようなストーリーになっております。えー、私事ではございますが、私はじゃあどっからやってたのって言われると、まあファイナルファンタジー7からあー宣伝プロデューサーとして参加させていただいております。えー、ファイナルファンタジーはその物語を通じてですね、世界の生きる人々に思い出にですね、えー、感情やそれぞれの人生の思い出、教訓、生きる糧、そういったものに参考になるような魅力的なキャラクターたちがどんどんどんどんナンバーごとに生まれてきておりますえそうした人間の感情や思いをリアルに描こうとしてえキャラクターたちに命を吹き込まれプレイヤー自身の投影である,あるだけではなく時には共に旅する仲間のようにですね、えー、感覚をプレイヤーに植え付けるような作品になっておりますえー、こうして皆様に愛されるキャラクターたちが、えー、生まれてきたことは、ファイナルファンタジーシリーズの一つの特徴であり、さらに強みであると思っております。ファイナルファンタジーシリーズの表現の歴史を一本にまとめた映像がございますので、ぜひこちらをご覧ください。
はいいかがでしたでしょうかまたファイナルファンタジーシリーズの歴史は多くをチャレンジしてきた歴史でもあります一作目のファイナルファンタジーからファイナルファンタジー15まで15作それぞれさまざまな試みを取り入れ新しいゲーム体験を模索してまいりました1作目「ファイナルファンタジー」では当時のコマンド選択でバトルを行うロールプレイング表現されなかった自分が操作するキャラクターを描きましたこれはその後にシリーズでも踏襲されることになり「ファイナルファンタジー」シリーズのグラフィックに対するこだわりの原点の1作目ということになったと思っています1990年に発売されたファイナルファンタジー3ではその後のファイナルファンタジーシリーズの一つの代名詞となる、えー、召喚魔法召喚獣が登場しました召喚獣はシリーズごとに種類や攻撃方法を変えながらバトルにダイナミックな演出をもたらすことになりましたハードスーパーファミコンに変え1991年に発売されたファイナルファンタジー4ではアクティブタイムバトルをですね、えまあ、このシステムをバトルに投入しまして、時間の概念を新しく加えました。まあ、このシステムはもう今や弊社は特許としても持っております。アクティブタイムバトルはその後のシリーズを様々な大きな影響を与えており、ハラハラドキドキする緊張感のあるバトルや、時にはドラマチックな展開を生んでくれることになりました。1997年に発売されたプレイステーション用ソフト、ファイナルファンタジー7では、その映像表現で驚きを与えました。2D のドットで作られた時から映像の美しさにこだわって、3D になることでさらにゲームの映像表現を拡大してまいりました。また、その後のシリーズでもモーションキャプチャーの技術を取り入れるなど、その時々で様々な技術を駆使して、リアルな映像表現を目指してまいりました。例えば、キャラクターが移動するフィールドでバトルがシームレスで行われるようになったファイナルファンタジー12と、それに伴って生まれたガンビットシステム、HD リマスターされたファイナルファンタジー12ザ・ドディアックエイジでも、古さを感じない革新的なシステムになっています。また、ゲームで培った 3DCG 技術を使用した映像作品、ファイナルファンタジー7アドベントチルドレンも生まれました。これはもう私も担当しておりまして、あのベネチア映画祭にも招待された作品になりました。その他、何倍以外にもシステムを異なった派生シリーズもたくさん生まれております。そしてファイナルファンタジーシリーズの大きな挑戦として、オンラインゲームの存在があります。2002年から始まったファイナルファンタジー11は、日本のオンラインロールプレイングゲームの草分け的存在。なんと18年を超えてまだ運営を続けております。その11の次に2010年にリリースされたファイナルファンタジー14は2013年にファイナルファンタジー14新生エオルゼアとなり7年の運営を続けており現在世界の累計登録アカウント数はなんと2000万人を突破しております。ファイナルファンタジーシリーズはゲームだけにとどまらず、さまざまなグッズも展開しております。まあ、私も作ってまいりましたが、また、ファイナルファンタジーシリーズの音楽を扱ったコンサートもワールドワイドツアーで展開しております。まあ、私もこれを今担当しておりますので、世界で皆さんに会うことも多々ございます。こうして、三十数年にわたって続いてきたファイナルファンタジーシリーズですが、今後もファイナルファンタジーシリーズは皆様に、新しいゲーム体験を提供していけるようにさまざまな取り組みにチャレンジしていきたいと思っております、えー、最後になりますが昨年発表されました現在開発中のシリーズ最新ナンバーとなる「ファイナルファンタジー16」の映像をぜひご覧ください、えー、まあ大変厳しい世界情勢ではございますがぜひこのゲームの世界だけは皆様と手と手を取り合って楽しんでいきたいと思ってます今後とも引き続きファイナルファンタジーシリーズをよろしくお願い申し上げます
You all know the target. Shiva's dominant. And only the dominant. How do we even know the girl will be among us? Our kind do not question orders. We follow them. Sergeant, they've summoned their icon. Icon? That thing's a bloody mountain. Our foe will not relinquish their mother crystal easily. This will be a bitter fight. You should not be out of doors. We have discussed this. Come, Joshua. Your father will be expecting us. I am Joshua's shield. I'm sworn to protect him. Your sword to our cause! What does it matter? It was the Dalmex who drove back the Crusaders in the Battle of the Twin Realms, was it not? Without the blessing of the Mother Crystal, we cannot defend our realm from the spread of the Blight. Do they really mean to invade us? It's the Archduke's son! Hello everyone, I hope you are all safe and progressing well with your games. My presentation to you today is about how we managed to use third-party tools mainly for procedural generation to reduce the cost of development for our game, Mass Builder. First, introductions. My name is Nontawat Thanakyat Grai and I'm both the game designer and the managing director for Vermilion Digital. Our team consists of six people, two programmers, one 3D artist, one 2D artist, a sound designer, and a game designer. The team had been working together in other companies and projects, and we've just started our own studio a few years ago. 
and we're currently working on the game Mass Builder, a fast-paced action game where players pilot a mech to fight against aliens that threaten the world, coupled with a mech builder. The game had been in development for a year and a half and a few months before it went into crowdfunding and finally released as an early access title. Here it is. Our main selling point of the game would be how the mechs can be customized as you can see here on the presentation. We've wanted each part of the mech to be interchangeable, painted, decaled, like we wanted to make a mech builder's dream game. We were ambitious, but there were various problems since the start of the journey. Obstacles that would not allow us to do what we wanted. The team was struggling in the financial department since we could not hire more people due to the space constraints of our office, but in the same problem loop, we also don't have enough funds to get a new place that could accommodate more people, and we'd like to push out as much content as we can. This could risk us going down before our game could even be released, and if we even managed to put our game out on the set schedule, we would have less content than what we wanted on early access for our players to be happy. Our single tree artists would sleep less than others since the burden on every aspect of the game, including the main selling point, was put on his back. So we were looking for outs on how to help unclog his work, and relief was found in third-party tools, specifically procedural generation programs that we finally integrated into our engine. I like to talk about how you could utilize them to achieve results and reduce the time required to develop your game thus lowering the overall budget of game development like ours. So, what is procedural generation? In our terms, it is simply a process to generate assets or objects that we can use in our game through a procedure, be it a randomized or a specific one. Procedural generation is a tool to provide you with unlimited amount of assets, you can say, ranging from small simple objects such as rocks, trees, boxes to buildings, structures to terrains, mountains, and even a whole level themselves. At this point in time, we've finished developing an in-house procedural generation tool already due to how useful we thought it was during the past years and to cater to the specific needs that our game required and we have integrated it into the game engine we are using. Before that, we were using a lot of third-party procedural generation tools and that has kept us afloat throughout the process before we were able to get our game up on the store and release it as an early access product and have it generate some income to help us sustain our company. I'll be showing you how procedural generation is used in Mass Builder and how it can be applied in each part of development from smaller ones to larger objects and how each one has cut the time required to develop our game up until this point by more than a half First, starting with small objects and assets itself. In this image, we have created an algorithm to procedurally generate small assets to be placed within our game. Each seed and configuration produces varying results up to our liking while also being randomized with limits to the configuration, including here in the case of wires, the number of angles, how curvy it is, the number of wires inside the tube, parts that are protruding, resembling anything itself. Basically, with some settings on the third-party tool, we are able to create as many of these as we like, randomize them until we find the one that uh, we can use in our designs, and then take this locally model out to place in our game, or further remodel or paint. Well, as a sci-fi looking game, these wires help us add into the sci-fi feeling. Now, in contrast to the low poly wires that are extremely small in our game, here are some high poly rock assets that were procedurally generated. We are able to set the intensity, the jaggedness, the amount of detail each of these can vary in each seed itself. Well, why is it high poly? Because these are rocks that are placed as props to decorate the levels and provide depth and details to the level itself. So now we have covered both locally, like things that are looked at from far away, things that doesn't need to be de in detail, and also things that 
will be close to the players and can be looked at in detail. Both can be remodeled and generated through procedural generation. Foliage is also not an exception in giving life to our levels. Without procedural generation, this would take a lot of time to create an asset library of each type of trees and then we still would have to place them as a whole in each part of our level or maybe create a brush or something to help place it. Through procedural generation, we are able to create different types of foliage with different leaf types for every kind of levels like snowy mountains, rocky places, forests or plains. We are able to use it in our game and also using our in-game tool to populate the whole level itself with these trees let it generate throughout the whole level and if we don't like it we just don't use it and remake it well let's see the results from all these things put together shall we as you can see here when we are creating a level we can specify a clip site on how parts of the assets that we've created with procedural generation are used or to generate new ones to match the terminals we are using it with in this case, you can see the different rock formation in the same area. Height, width, everything is done through procedural generation, moving our workload from a tree artist onto a tool that can be used on demand, allowing them to work on other aspects of the game and creating contents to finish your game much faster, lowering your total budget in game development. Another example of terrain procedural generation. Trees and foliage are placed into the game through a specified seed of intensity. This example shows that through a tool, we can specifically design our levels to how we like it to look without the need to manually place each part onto the level itself. If your studio has a level designer, they can use procedural generation to either get a feeling of how they like the level to be or just fully finish the level as generated here. Now, we have taken a further step and developed a procedural generation tool and integrated it into our game engine. We've created a tool that could generate platforms based on a shape with dimensions that we can specify in this tool. Shown here as an example is a platform based level where players move around inside a specified area. We first generate a section and maybe customize it, add some parts, maybe some slopes. Then let the tool calculate and generate walls around the section and part provided. These walls and parts are modeled and given to the tool and we can select which kind of walls we like it to use. No need for manual placements anywhere. After that, we select the floors we like the area to have, choose the textures that we've created and have the tool add them into each corresponding position for us. Select if we'd like to create connections or parts into another area and finishing it with walls, cells, ceilings, and light sources. All of these are virtually done in through procedural generation. And as I said, if we don't like this level structure, we can just scrap it and remake it in a short period of time. For this specific example, we have generated a whole level to be used in game. And here are the results of combining everything together. Now, we have a level that players can run around and play in. Each part connects to each other and they look seamless through our designs and specifics. So, let's take a look at it in game. As you can see, it's almost ready to be used. The rest would be to populate this level with props and decorate them. Maybe change a piece of texture somewhere to have paints on maybe some wreckages or some damaged areas. But the take is that more than 50% of the work is done already. You already have a good base through procedural generation. Thus, a good amount of workload is lifted from a team member. And as an indie developer with not much funding or budget to spare, having a free hand is always a welcome thing. In conclusion, I'd like to remind you, we did not have the funds nor space to hire more employees. And what I've been talking about for the whole presentation is a method, 
a tool we use to overcome these obstacles. Our game was ready for early flash shipping much faster than we have anticipated at first through discovery, learning, and usage of the tool. And it is now generating income to our studio to help us sustain our game development dream. We've just passed 50,000 units sold during our one year anniversary, the passing September. And for all those mentioned though, procedural generation is an ever powerful, and of course, we still have to fix and take the assets that we've generated further or put those parts together to create something that we could actually use in the game. But it significantly reduced workload from our team member by an extreme amount. We can even say that our single 3D artist was able to work on creating characters, armor parts, enemies, and level designs of the finest detail within the time frame of an update which is currently around 14 weeks a cycle, as to not have our players wait for too long. I like to say using procedural generation tools help us achieve what we wanted, and you should know that these tools aren't costly at all. If you're planning to create one for in-house usage, it might take a few weeks or months, but currently there are inexpensive solutions for indie developers on most tools that can procedurally generate terrains, tile sets, and assets from leading to developers used in AAA industries, be it games or movies, and you should check them out. Some famous names I can throw out right now would be Houdini and World Creator. Just see which one fits your game and if it could help lower the time required for development, and as a result, lower the budget required to develop your indie game. Maybe you can also get to know one right now and use it in a project in the future. Nonetheless, I hope you all get to create the games that you wanted to do. Thank you very much. Bridge communication gaps, cross communication channels, and build lasting customer connections the omni channel way. Making every moment count with InfoBit. Hello, 大家好. 我是来自中国深圳兵沟贝尔兵果游戏的联合创始人能够有一些启发和帮助 先呢，我来介绍一下我们的游戏《卡库远古封印》。《卡库远古封印》呢，是一款轻松欢乐的动作冒险游戏，在游戏里呢，玩家将扮演一名失忆少年卡库和他的宠物小皮鸡，在一个
，风格呢非常的鲜明有趣，啊，内容也很积极健康。我们认为卡酷远古封印呢，在游戏题材上和画面的表现选择这一块，呃，很大程度与我们嗯创立之初对游戏玩家人群定位有很大的关系。如同各位所看到的，卡酷远古封印呢，从视觉感官上不会让人觉得是一款非常的硬核向的这种的三 D 动作类游戏。不会让一些不太玩3 D 的这种的动作类游戏玩家哈，会想产生一种想试一试这种感觉，呃，这一点呢，我们在线下的展会以及线上的一些试玩会的时候，有得到了一些证实确实吸引到一些平时不怎么玩 3D 动作类型游戏的这些玩家，他们会因为我们的游戏画面吸引而去尝试，想去试一试的这种的心态。那么卡酷上手之后的感受是怎么样呢？啊，我们也有去跟他们去做了一个调查。我们希望的是卡酷能够给大家有一种简单爽快，且并且一个很有趣、有强烈的视觉冲击力的这样的一种的战斗的一种体验啊，这是我们对这个战斗系统的一个设计的核心的理念。呃，我们希望来玩卡酷远古封印的玩家呢，不会因为只是受到了画面吸引而来，但是又被一个很复杂的操作呃给吓跑了。所以我们希望从视觉感官和游戏体验呢，希望能够得到一个统一。呃，真正能够让更多的广泛玩家，呃，比较轻松愉悦的去享受一段冒险之旅，呃，从中收获到很多游戏的乐趣。所以我们的游戏定位呢，其实是针对于更多的、呃、多年龄阶层的人，希望他们能容易比较轻松上手的去玩这款游戏。呃，除了上述所说的这种的战斗设计这一块呢，呃，游戏中也有着广阔的奇幻大陆，呃，与谜题重重的一些地宫。在这个世界的各个角落呢，充满了各种各样的惊喜啊、呃！玩家可以去战斗，也可以去收集，也可以去成长，可以去探险、去冒险啊！只要带着一颗充满冒险的一颗心去进入这个游戏，就能获得一个不一样的乐趣。嗯我们的游戏呢，预计于二零二一年在 Steam 平台呢开启抢先体验，呃，有兴趣的冒险家可以提前来关注一下我们的游戏页面，并且添加一下心愿单，呃，随时关注我们的一个最新动态，啊、呃，同时呢，借此机会，我也希望能够，呃，对卡酷远古封印这种题材和类型擅长的一些发行商，能够与我来商讨一下发行的合作事宜，呃，我的邮箱会打在这个屏幕下方，啊、呃，期待您的来电。最后，我想分享一下游戏研发至今的一些感悟吧。我认为游戏最初的创立的时候，呃，是一个非常重要的事情。呃，我与很多独立游戏制作人聊起此事的时候，我发现大家都有一个共同的问题，就会说想把这款独立游戏打造成一款
呃自己喜欢的一种类型的游戏。这件事情本身其实是没有什么错的，但是我想说的是，玩游戏和做游戏是两码事情。做游戏的时候，你需要考虑更多的事情。呃，作为一名独立游戏制作人，你在创立这个项目的之初的时候，你需要更多的思考，你与你的团队，你们所擅长的点在什么地方？你们需要尽可能的去放大你们所擅长的这个点啊，并且找到非常重要的驱动游戏乐趣的一个游戏核心，呃的设计啊，并且不停的去实践、优化它，再去实践它，再去优化它，直到把这个游戏的核心玩法变得很成熟且有趣。啊，再去围绕着这个核心玩法，再进行展开的更多的内容的创作啊。其实作为一款独立游戏，最怕的思绪就是你的个性与特点，呃、啊，只是去一味的去追逐他人的脚步，做的好像是像这款游戏，好像是像那款游戏，而找不到自己的好玩的点。所以这样的内容的话，做出来可能会与你最初所想做这款游戏的游戏初衷会有所背离，最后可能会浪费了很多的很多的时间和机会。所以呢，当你与你的团队呃确定了。驱动于你们游戏乐趣的这个核心玩法的时候，一定要注集中注意力，把这个核心玩法给坚持下去啊！它只会让你们这款游戏越来越好玩，并且让更多的人记住你们。感谢大家听我对卡酷远古封印的一些心得与分享以及介绍，呃、啊，希望在不久的将来，卡酷远古封印能够给大家带来一些不一样的游戏体验和乐趣啊！谢谢大家。